Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Yeah. 56 year old male presented to ER with complaints of right sided groin swelling associated with pain since 3 days. On initial 10 second assessment, airway was patent, breathing circulation, uh, breathing was normal, saturation 100 percentage, respiratory rate 16 per minute. Coming to circulation, BP was 130 bar 90 millimeters of mercury, pulse rate was 96 per minute. All peripheral pulsations equally felt. GCS was 15 by 15, pain score was, he was having a pain score of 8 by 10, so we initially gave an injection PCM and uh, patient was febrile. On reassessment, the pain score reduced to 4 by 10, but the patient, we offered analgesic, but the patient deferred. Okay. The history is 56 year old male with no known comorbidities presented to ER with complaints of right sided growing swelling. Initially, it disappeared while lying down and only appeared during coughing and straining. Since three days, he is having complaints of pain over the swelling and it fails to disappear spontaneously. No complaints of vomiting, constipation, abdominal pain, fever or discharge from the site. On examination, patient conscious oriented, no paralectal cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy, all systems with normal limit. On hernia examination, patient we initially uh, examined in lying down position. On inspection, there was a lemon size swelling or the right growing. Uh, uh, skin over the swelling was normal, no visible peristalsis, no scar marks seen. On palpation, swelling which is mildly tender, no local rise of temperature, cuff impulse was absent. Uh, cuff impulse was absent? Absent. There was a swelling mm -hmm. which, which was not uh, vis okay. visible on mm -hmm. the lying down position itself. Sc scrotum, uh, right side sw mild swelling was there, no tenderness, no increase in temperature. So our uh, impression was a right inguinal scrotal. Uh, it was extending to the scrotum? Ah, it was extending, extending a mild right uh, scrotal swelling was there. Okay. But it was not non tender, no increase in rise of temperature, nothing was there. Okay. <coughs> so, so, what we, are your uh, differential diagnosis for a patient presenting with a groin swelling to the ER? Can be any lymph node. Okay, lymph node, inguinal lymph, lymph node. Nodes. Okay, agreed then. Um, then, any abscess or sebaceous cyst? Okay, abscess, sebaceous cyst then. Uh, what abscess you can get it in the inguinal region? Uh, Hydrolimate. What abscess that that Lymphoma. might be the first presentation of some chronic disease? That is a clue that Lymphoma. I have. Lymphoma. Soya abscess. So soya abscess they will down track and from this the fascia everything will be so that is the area that it will get collected and the patient can just come with an initial uh, inguinal swelling. So later on we should go behind and see whether it's a pot spine. So pot spine can just present with a soya abscess. So we had patients that's why I am telling you even one of my close relative have the same thing and uh, we later on diagnosed to have tuberculosis with the soya abscess. Then uh, then uh, if there is crotal swelling also we can uh, okay yeah, the undescended testis very rarely in the children undescended testis adjacent scrotal swelling also you can think about all the testicular uh, lesions that is causing but classically in inguinal swelling these are the differential okay. diagnosis that we need to uh, consider and uh, have to differentiate between each these something you said regarding inguinal hernia uh, inguinal hernia is the most common one followed by lymphadenopathy followed by any of the local abscess okay. and uh, these are the three differentiate so uh, right now uh, this patient had three day history three day history, three day history of an inguinal swelling okay. which was uh, initially, in initially was not present Oh, initially it was present but it was uh, disappeared on lying down. Okay, when he was lying down it was, it was getting disappeared. disappeared. Okay, and uh, no, since last three, three days, days the size of the swelling? Is, uh, increase, means, uh, it's not disappearing was the main complaint and the pain. It is increasing in size? Uh, it is not a complaint. That it's not it is the same, same size. size. Pain? Pain was there. Pain gradually it has increased. Basically. Okay, any skin changes? No, no skin no changes. Skin changes, nothing or any no you said regarding there is no fever no, there is no, no other thing so there, we are suspecting something that has happened since last three days or something was there before right now it is not decreasing yes, so more in favor of an inguinal hernia uh, that has come to this patient okay so inguinal hernia then the question is direct or indirect but in ed uh, how will you differentiate a direct and indirect inguinal hernias um, direct hernias will be more towards the uh, medial uh, aspect mm. and indirect will be more lateral aspect okay, of, the, okay. Uh, of the pubic tuber. Okay. And um, cough. Which is easily reversible? 
reducible sorry um, direct direct is easily reducible. reducible so that is one thing and indirect is not uh, easily yeah, reducible okay. so that is a difficulty that we will have so which is common indirect or direct 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 equivalent is are more common and which can extend both can extend both to the scrotum but most commonly direct will uh, start growing to the scrotum much more earlier and what are the uh, hernia contents usual hernia contents omentum it can bubble. start off with the omentum bubble can be the mm. then uh, any part of the c and the bladder can okay. also be the Okay, so uh, what is against an inguinal hernia in this case? What is against an inguinal? You said regarding there is no cuff it, impulse. Ah, cuff so, impulse. Uh, can an hernia present without a cuff impulse? If there is uh, irreducibility and strangulation, can... Ah, then that is the difference that you, you wanted to have. You have to tell yourself strangulation. When you are using the terminology strangulation, irreducible hernia. These are the two terms that we should be using it with caution. So when you say, okay, this is an patient is in strangulation. So what are the clinical features for uh, strangulation? Uh, pain what is exactly uh, strangulation? Strangulation is the, uh, when there are, uh, it is it's the type of irreducible hernia and the bowel, uh, the supply to the bowel will be reduced. And the blood supply is affected. Effect. The blood supply is affected and, and probably the uh, bowel contents, whatever, whether it is omentum, the hernia contents, whether it is the omentum or the intestine, which has gone for necrosis. Yes. Possibility of necrosis. I am not saying 100% necrosis will there. If there is a chance that necrosis will occur. And the other one, irreducible or you can call it as, what is the type? Incarcerated. Incarcerated hernia. So, these are the two differential things. So, strangulation, what, do you, what will be the clinical features of strangulation? As you said, irreducible. Both can be irreducible. Then pain will be there. Pain will be there. Skin changes. Skin changes then. Yeah, any signs of intestinal obstruction can also be present. Okay, just omentum, they need not have uh, any in, uh, evidence of intestinal obstruction. Then. Peritonitis features. Features of peritonitis like sepsis, the patient has gone into peritonitis, hypotension, tachycardia. By seeing the look of the patient itself, he will be in sepsis. Okay. So, that is the gross differentiation features. And again, time duration is also very key. Time duration, usually after 24 hours, it is more likely to be a strangulation. If an irreducible hernia is kept intact for like more than 24 hours, there is a high chance that this patient can go for a strangulation. So, that is again this patient had three days history. So, we are not 100% sure that this patient is whether is having an irreducible incarcerated hernia or an irreducible strangulated hernia. Strangulation is automatically irreducible. So, we have differentiated but clinically only thing that is against uh, strangulation is what there is no fever, mm -hmm. there is no signs of any peritonitis, but it is not having any cough impulse. Mm -hmm. uh, the swelling is not increasing, but the patient has got pain and it is more than three three days. So, there is a possibility it can be an early strangulation mm -hmm. rather than a pure strangulation. It is an irreducible hernia which has been kept unattended for the last 24 hours, more than 24 hours. Now, it is slowly going into an probable strangulation. That is the face of this patient. It is not purely one and purely that. Something in between is what is happening to this patient. So, what will you do right now in the ED for this patient? Uh, you have given the analysis. Yes. Then. Uh, we can keep the patient and pure. Mm. Uh, then uh, we can do a USC mm. a Doppler for the uh, looking for the bubble viability. <coughs> Uh, if the bubble is non-viable or it is a strangulated hernia, emergency surgery will be required. So, J surgery consultations should be sought. Uh, if it is not strangulated, we can... Imagine that you are in a peripheral setup where you don't have any surgical facilities available. Uh, you need to take a call for this patient. It's not strangulation, clearly strangulation, clearly not incarcerated. So, ultrasound facility is also not there. So, what will you do now? We can try, give a trial for reduction mm -hmm. from the bedside. Okay. Uh, if it is not, uh, if it is un unsuccessful, then we have to okay. refer the so patient. So, positioning the patient, start off with the reduction maneuver. Even in the ER or in the periphery, just how will you start uh, produ uh, reducing this hernia? What will be the position of the patient? Standard. It will be ideally, it should be tunnel lumbar position. When you are planning for reduction, ideal position is tunnel lumbar. Mm -hmm. So, what is the procedure that we call? Taxes. Uh, it is taxes, basically, what we are doing, we are manipulating. manipulating. So we are trying to manipulating, we are doing some arrangements. So that is the exact word nom uh, nomenclature or word uh, meaning of the word taxes. So what we are trying to do here, we are trying to reduce the hernia gently and we are trying to be prepared 
by giving what by giving a procedural, procedural sedation. sedation so that is one area where we need to because it's a painful procedure so you need to give an adequate painful procedural sedation so what is the preferred agent for procedural sedation opioids or you can uh, give opioids with benzodiazepine combination or you can give other agent depending upon the asa grading risk factors mm -hmm. you can choose any of this agent mm -hmm. uh, but the patient need to be sedated and analgesics also should be given. So that is what procedural sedation is all about. Not just sedation, yeah. there should be analgesia also. Analgesia with anesthesia is what is procedural okay. sedation. So you can choose any of those agents depending upon the risk factor and ideally the patient should be in trendal lumbar position. That is the classical recommended position okay. because it will get the help of the gravity also. Mm -hmm. When the patient is standing, you are doing something against, against the gravity. gravity. When you are doing it in the trendal lumbar position, it will be along with the help of the gravity. Okay. Then, next. Uh, keep the patient and pure procedural sedation. Mm. It should be gentle while uh, doing the procedure, mm. and uh, and be safe because if there is any uh, uh, any uh, unsuccessful events, then we have to. The most patient. important thing you are doing for a strangulation should not be attempted. attempted. But sometimes your procedure fails, so you need to think that it's a strangulated so hernia. Uh, the first step is to uh, identify the uh, defect of the uh, hernia. What exactly is the defect? defect. So. Get a 3D view within your eyes. So uh, you are having a hernia orifice. So just palpate your finger around the defect and you get the feel. Okay, this is what the defect is. Maybe a very small defect you might be able to see and a large content would have come out of it. So how you will be technically able to send this much huge amount of content back to the abdomen, back to the in, uh, peritoneal cavity. We have to elo uh, elongate the, uh, enlarge the uh, or that can uh, opening. So with non-dominant hand, just uh, hold. We can pull the content. content. If possible, it's a painful. Again, I am telling you, you have to give procedural surgery. Mm -hmm. You can pull the content so it will become elongated. Mm -hmm. So the elongated in terms, what will happen? There is a high chance that it can easily mm -hmm. escape through the defect. Suppose you are doing pushing it from down, what can it can mushroom it in between. Mm -hmm. So complete reduction won't be possible. Maybe you are reducing the omental, uh, maybe reducing the intestinal, maybe omental contents might be still present inside the hernial orifice outside. The so elongation you can do and then you can gently try reducing it and just through the defect you can try pushing it in into the through the defect it can be successful it can be a failure also again you can get the help of your ultrasound so ultrasound guided if possible you can still do it because it's a very superficial uh, thing that you are doing so you can see the defect and maybe through the defect you can push the content also and after this uh, reduction maneuver it can become failure or it can become successful most important thing is that they should, if it is reduction is successful, what is the advice that you will give to the patient? Uh, uh, don't miss any other st uh, stressful conditions. But they should be immediately the posted for a surgery, surgery, not in the same sitting. Yeah. Maybe within the next two, two to three weeks, they should not wait anymore because anytime they can come up with a strangulated right. hernia. Strangulated right. hernia, as you said, straight away, we are not doing any manipulation. Straight away, we are taking them for the surgery. Right. So. Our aim in the emergency room as an emergency physician will be to differentiate what are the different types of inguinal swelling if it is an incarcerated or it's a strangulated hernia. Strangulated hernia, no manipulation. You start off with an antibiotic because already there would have been some amount of peritonitis sepsis developed. Immediately call the surgeon and get them involved for this procedure. But if it is an incarcerated hernia, definitely you can try with the Taxis. Taxis. Taxis is what is the manual called and the mnemonic that you can remember is GPS. GPS. GPS is gentle and be prepared and be safe. P for prepare and safe for S for safe. So that's a simple, this is actually, uh, there is a consensus, whatever I have said is regarding an European uh, article that has come up with and uh, we can use this manual safely in the ED and it's a simple algorithm. Strangulation, no evidence of strangulation. There is strangulation, straight away the surgery. What are the features of strangulation? Edema, hypotension, peritonitis features, more than 24 hours. If nothing is there, then you try with protection. So that is what you can practice. Uh, but whenever you have in doubt, you can always get the help of the surgeons. So suppose we are not doing it in day in and day out of our practice. Maybe once in a while only it will come to the ED. So definitely you can call for the surgeon, but when you are alone, this is what you can try because there is a referral center is pretty far away or surgeon is not available in your center. So you need not take a risk of the patient going into a strangulation. Definitely you can do it in the ED. Anything else that you want to add on, you can just tell. Um, the ultrasound findings in incarceration yeah. and strangulation, uh, free fluid in the sac, 
ഹൈപ്പർ എക്കോയിക് ദിസ് ഇസ് ഫോർ ഇയർ ഇൻകാസറേഷൻ ഓർ സ്ട്രാങ്കുലേഷൻ സ്ട്രാങ്കുലേഷൻ Uh, free fluid in sac, hyperechoic fl- fat, mm. isoechoic thickening of sac, mm. thickening of wall of herniated bowel, mm. free fluid within herniated bowel loop and absence of pectorals. Okay. Uh, for this patient, we did a UST. Mm-hmm. UST showing a large defect in right inguinal region with bowel and omendum as contents. Okay. And scrotum, bilateral testis was normal but herniation of bowel loops along with omendum seen in scrotal sac with no features of obstruction or strangulation. Okay. so uh, j surgery was uh, taken up for the surgery right inguinal uh, open inguinal mesh plasty was done oh they, uh, they uh, reduction was not no, no, was they, not tried no, in no, the ed no, no, no. why it was not tried in ed 3 days and so they, that's the reason it has been mean more than 3 days they don't want to take up because that's what when we see in the ultrasound maybe the flow wall will be adequate mm-hmm. if you have a facility to operate straight away that is best yes. but uh, whether you have a confusion like strangulation versus incarceration the same fellow he would have come within 12 hours of onset we could have reduced and asked him to come back to the opd for a date for the surgery but it's again more than 3 days not to take any risk okay so uh, there was no strangulation no strangulation only uh, uh, incarceration was there so they did a mesh repair. mesh repair okay anything else that you want to add on any other algorithms anything that you want to tell you can um, tell uh, treatment of uh, uncomplicated growing hernia and complicated growing hernia okay uncomplicated with groin hernia the question is whether it is male or female mm-hmm. if it is male uh, ask two questions uh, uh, whether both are true if it is is it inguinal hernia or if the patient is asymptomatic if both are yes wait and watch if both are no uh, it goes to the surgical repair and if the female is not uh, is not not a pregnant we can surgically repair if pregnant not to do anything at that time and uh, if uh, in in surgical repair you have to think about any previous ro- lower abdominal surgeries mm. if any ascites patient intolerant to general anesthesia irreducible or large inguinal scrotal hernia if it is yes you can uh, go with an open hernia and uh, if it is no you can go with an laparoscopic surgery this is uncom- uncomplicated if it is complicated hernia uh, look whether any incarceration uh, acute incarcerated hernia without signs of strangulation <laughs> so uh, as certain uh, trial of uh, bedside uh, reduction Lush. can be done if it is successful schedule for a surgery repair surgery. and if it unsuccessful urgent surgery uh, repair uh, in on approach for uh, regarding the approach laparoscopy is approach is planned or not if it is yes do a laparoscopic exploration and uh, if the bowel is seen to be uh, viable we can go for laparoscopy repair if not you can have to do an open hernia repair and uh, if there is signs of strangulation also open hernia repair should be done and uh, with or without bowel resection and if there is bowel perforation or abscess uh, we have to do a non mesh repair if there is no abscess or perforation open mesh repair can be done this is just the general management of hernia but end of the day two questions that you need to ask strangulation irreducible strangulation emergency surgical management incarcerated hernia you can try for a reduction a simple reduction bedside reduction Okay fine thank you